Yes, hello. Thank you very much for your applause. Thank you for inviting me to be here with you. My topic today, as you can read, as you can see, is the German educational system. And I wanted to show, I wanted to bring to you, uh, with a, of course, with the example in floristry. Yeah. So, I want to start with the German school system. I think it's not so different to other school systems we have. In the basic, we have four years the primary school, like in many other countries as well. Afterwards, we have the secondary school. It's for five years. And on the other hand, you can also visit the high school. It depends upon you, yes, your personal, your, your um, yeah, how good you were in school, how good your scores are, yes? If you have visited the secondary school, then you can decide to, to learn a profession. A profession, normally, the, du uh, the duration of this vocational school is three years. And those who visited the high school, of course, they can go to university. And in the end, all go out to the labor market one day. So, this is the basic. Now let's have a look on this special dual vocational education. Dual, that means we have two parallel systems. We have two institutions that are involved in this education. We have on one side the companies, the flower shops, for floristry, and on the other side, we have, have a mandatory vocational school everyone has to visit. The times spent, it's about 70% in company and about 30% uh, in vocational schools. So most of the time, they are in the flower shop. Yes, we have different parties involved in Germany and Everything is surveyed by the state. We have, w everything is in laws and acts, it's written. So there are really strict rules in this vocational education. On one part, we have, of course, the trainees. They want to learn this profession. They want to get, they want to become someday a florist. Yes. On the other side, of course, we have the employers. They have the flower shops. They learn, they teach, of course, the employee, uh, the trainees, sorry. And they conclude a contract, a kind of training contract. This contract is exactly defined, the contents of this contract. So there's no possibility for nego negotiations. It's surveyed, it's really fixed. Another player in this is the Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The Chamber of Commerce and Industry, they check and survey this training over these three years. And the next one, of course, the school, the government is also involved in it. The vocational school is another player in it. They have a curriculum that must be learned, that must be taught to the students, to the, to the trainees. And we have the social partners. We have unions and employers associations that are part of our vocational education system. So let's have a look. Let's have a look what concerns to the trainees. The trainees, they have to be, they have to work 40 hours a week, including the school. In these three years, this, the first year they go two days per week to school, in the second year one day, and in the third year also one day. What is their duty? Another duty is they have to learn, they are required. They cannot say, oh, no, no, I don't like to learn this. They have to. It's their duty. So, 
they have to visit the vocational school, of course, and if they are younger than 21. When they are elder, there's no need to go to vocational school because they have already fulfilled their duties. So, for the trainees, it's relatively easy to terminate this contract. I will tell you later what they can do when they want to terminate. And for the employers, it's not that easy. There are really rare, rare cases where they can terminate a contract with a trainee. What is the duty of them? Of course, at first, they must be licensed as a training company. So they must make an exam, being able to be a uh, an employer, an instructor, a trainer. This is surveyed by the government, by, by laws. It's just exactly written and defined what they have to do to get this permission to, yes, to teach trainees. Yes, they train according to a special training plan. They have to make a training plan for these three years and this must be written down and it's a part of the contract. And they have to teach according to this plan. So they cannot say, oh, let's see what we do next month, maybe this one, maybe this one. No, they have, to, they have this plan and they have to go through it, exactly. Yes, of course, they have to pay the training allowance. So the, the allowance is not really very high for trainees. In the first year, it's, in Germany, it's 850 euro. Um, uh, in the second year, it's 950. And in the third year, it's 1,000 euro. But anyway, trainees are not paid that high. Afterwards, of course, they can earn more money. The employer has to avoid, uh, has to provide all materials and tools without costs for the trainee, like flowers, like tools, like books, like everything. And yes, as I told you, he cannot easily terminate this contract. There must be a really heavy reason. For example, a trainee steals some money from the cash. That's a reason you can say, okay, we ended up or if a trainee beats his master. So it's also a reason. But I, hopefully this happens not very often, at least in floristry. <laughs> I don't know in other professions. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's come to the Chamber of Commerce and Industry. It's an official, it's a legal, stately uh, institution. The task of the Chamber is they check and register the training companies. You know, as I told you, every, every uh, employer has to be registered. They have to make a test. And the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, they survey all this, that they are, they are capable to do this training over three years. They, they monitor and check, in, uh, and check in company training. They have... Uh, they check if everything is running in the right way. So, of course, they organize the examination in the end of the training. After three years, so they have to make an examination and it's organized by the chamber. And they appoint the examination board. In examinations, you need, of course, people that assess what they do like the bouquets, like the arrangements that get scores on it. And these are florist meister, master, that assess that. And they must be uh, qualified and they are qualified by the chamber. Yes, they check the contract. If this training contract is really properly fulfilled, if everything is right, for example, the allowance has to rise every year. If this is not the case, they bring it back and say, you have to change this. Uh, for example, what else? Um, no, okay, I'll tell you, maybe I'll tell you later. <laughs> it's not coming now. So, 
the fourth player is the school, the vocational school. The vocational school, as I told you, two days in the first year, yes, they have a framework curriculum and they teach mostly in theory, but also practical things like doing uh, floral arrangements. But first of all, the most important is the theory. I tell you later what kind of subjects they have at school. Yes, of course they finance, the vocational schools are financed by, by the public because the state pays for that, yes, and teaches the profession, uh, the, the theoretical and the practical contents, as I told you. So, and last but not least, we have two other institutions that are the social partners. We have the unions on one side and the employers, employers associations, like for example, FDF. I think FDF is well known in floristry in Korea. We are the employers association in floristry. And what are they doing, those, those two partners? They no negotiate the regulations for the in-company training. They say, okay, all these are skills that a florist has to know. It's written in a plan, and all that is written here, it has to be taught in the flower shop. At present, we are, we are in a new, we, we try to find a new contents in floristry. We started five years ago. I am happily inside this committee and I can work on it. And we have some changes in the plan in this in-company training. Yes, for example, of course, as we always hear, things like sustainability and digitality, it's going to be more, it's going to increase in the training of a florist. Because a florist is not only making bouquets and arrangements. <clears throat> yes, what is decided? The title of this profession is also decided, yes? Now, it's called florist. Maybe the new one, we call it floral designer. Maybe we leave it like it is. It's not decided yet, 100%, because we are still in negotiations. So, the profile, as I told you, these are the contents of this, of this um, profession. And then time frame. That means how long should be taught and trained each part. For example, bridal bouquet should be taught about five weeks. Or um, things like funeral should be made 12 weeks. And this is in this plan that is negotiated between social partners. So what else is uh, what else is inside this? Uh, um, it's the ex examination requirements. What a florist has to do when he does his exam. There are different tasks he has to do. I will tell you later a little bit more about it. And they decide the ex examination board. As I told you, I'm in this examination board and we are in negotiation with this social partner finding new contents for a florist. Okay, what is inside this training regulation plan? Okay, just a short, quick step through it. Occupational health and safety, like I think in every profession, everybody has to know things about health and safety environmental protection, sustainability, rational use of energy, planning work processes, uh, maintaining tools and all these things, devices and machines. Okay, knowledge about plants, that's really important. Identification, the care about plants, how can you maintain the plants, how, how do you have to care of them, of course, one part is also designing and making plant and flower decorations like 
like table decoration, like funeral, decor like wedding decoration. That's of course also a part, but as you can see, it's only a small part of it. Yeah? The rest is theoretically and is also important, the purchase of the flowers, selling flowers, dealing with clients. That's really very important. So, the context of this school curriculum, it's, it's similar. It's similar to the, to the other one. So we have three main subjects in the school. That's botanics on one side. So they learned a lot about anatomy, about physiology, like uh, cytology and nomen, the, the names of the flowers, nomenclatures. And the big thing is plant protection because if you are a florist in Germany, afterwards you're automatically allowed to sell, oh, what's the word, Pflanzenschutzmittel, oh. plant, uh, um, I don't know the word, where you shelter plants, yeah, yeah you, you, pesticides, you're allowed to sell pesticides. And you have, of course, to inform the client about this. So this is a big part, the plant protection is a big part in schoolish education. The other subject is floristic, of course, floristic design. So we have all these different things we, we have to be able to do as a florist, like uh, table decorations, wedding decorations. But there's also a lot of theory in floral design. Yes, basic termination, terminology in floristic, using floristic tools to make a good work. That's also important in floristic, in this subject, floristic design. And the third one is, of course, merchandising. Merchandising, selling flowers, dealing with clients, buying flowers, where's the best source, yeah, we heard about cutting in the garden, but there are also different other sources all over the world where we can buy flowers and all this uh, florist has to know, of course. <clears throat> so let's have a look on the final exam. Yeah, it's organized by the Chamber of Industry, by Commerce and Industry. So the permission or the admission for this exam it's been made by the chamber. And the permission you get if you have three years this vocational education training, then you are automatically, you can go to your exam. But in Germany, we have other ways to go to an exam, like lateral entries. People, for example, imagine you have somebody working many years in the flower shop for 10 years, for example, and she didn't have the time to go to vocational school, she didn't have the opportunity to make this normal way of education, so she can, after four and a half years in this flower shop, she can apply for the exam, and normally she will get the admission to that. So it's very, it's very transparent, it's very a very good way for others to get in this job, to learn this profession, to get this, this title in the end. Yes, that's what we have. So the, the examination is, uh, exists, there are two parts there on one side, it's the written examination, of course, and on the other side, it's the practical examination. Any profession you learn, in Germany at least, it's like this, or any master exam, you always have a written examination, a theoretical examination, and a practical. There's no way to do it without this written one. Yes, you see, a good florist is not only a, a florist that makes wonderful bouquets or wonderful arrangements, but he has also been good in theory. He has to know all the things he learned at school and in flower shop over these three years. And there we will make tests. Yes? And it's, the weighting is 50%. 50, 50%. So the end score is 
a mixture out of these half and half. So in the end, when you have finished your exam, when you pass the exam, we have in, in Europe, we have a qualification frame. So different titles, they are, um, they, they are in a frame, they have, in, they have different levels. And the level for floristry is the level four. We will see later, the Meister florist, for example, has the level six. And though it's Europe, in, in, within the EU, European Union, it's a common, a common frame where all the professions are inside. The written examination, we have three different subjects. We have, one is economics and social studies. The next one is merchandise management. And the third one is one big test within botanics, floristic design, and things like architectural style. And the practical examination, we have three different tasks, like a hand-tied bouquet must be, must be made. There is an arrangement in a container, a planted container. These are the three techniques, like binding, sticking, and planting. And on the other side, we have a big project task. Of course, this project task is the biggest part of this practical examination, and it consists out of four different parts. We have, they get a task, the, the, the trainees get a task. For example, if you have decided you want to make a wedding, you get the task, please make a bridal bouquet for this bride and there is one picture. So this is your task, you have one hour time and then you have to make a sketch with this bridal bouquet in color. Sketch with color and you have to make a calculation of this bridal bouquet that you, that you are going to do. So, and then you give it to the, to the board and after two weeks or three weeks, you're going to have a sales conversion. So you, you're going again in the, in the exam to the board and you tell them why you did it this way. Why did you use the red roses? And why did you use this form? Why do, do you want to make it hanging? Why do you use this technique? And they have to argument about this. Yes, and this is a sales conversation. It lasts 30 minutes. This is, by the way, uh, this part they are the most scared of, the florists. Yes, I can, I can make sure because they are nervous. They, they are scared. What, what, what's going to expect? Uh, what's waiting for me there? They are so unsure a little bit. Yes, and in the end, two hours later, uh, two, sorry, two weeks later, they have to make this bridal bouquet as a practical work. So you see this project task is a very big part of this practical examination. It's the biggest. We have the weighting, 10%. This, each of these hand tied bouquet arrangement and planted container. And of course, 70% is this project work. So of course, these three these three uh, works, you can, you can prepare, yes? You can, you can rehearse, you can practice, you can practice this anti bouquet. There are no obligations, no uh, things that are asked for. But this one, it's really surprising because you don't know what, which task you get. And you have one hour time. It's really, really a, a, a standing, solving this is a really, a good work, because it's less time. So, okay, maybe some statistics from our uh, German examination, uh, education. We have total trainees all over Germany. It's about 500,000 in all professions, of course, not only floristry. And as you can see in floristry, it's 
not that much. We have maybe 1,000 per year. It used to be, of course, more many years ago, but like in many other professions, it's getting less and less. The reasons, um, it's not so easy to say what are the reasons, but maybe, yes, the paying is not that good in Germany for the florists. You're getting dirty fingers. Many young people, they don't like getting dirty hands. Yes, you have to work on Saturday. Some have to work on Sunday. Yes, and maybe these are reasons why it's getting less and less. But we are, I think it will not go more down than now. It's, I think we are on the level that's okay. Could be more. Maybe one day it's going to rise a little bit more. We, going to, we make a lot of advertisement in Germany from our association together with the chamber. But it's, it's, yeah, it's difficult. It's hard. Yeah. Anyway, we're working on it. Yeah, the floristic pass rate in the average, it's 90%. That's a lot com in comparison to other uh, professions. And companies with... Hello, you hear me? Yeah, companies with training permission, we have round about in Germany 3,000. Yes. As I told you, uh, the training, the permission to train trainees, uh, it's given by the chamber and we have almost 3,000 and as you can see we have 1,000 per year, we have 3,000 so you can see that not every flower shop that has the permission has a trainee. Some of them are tired, they don't want to make any more longer education, some say Oh my God, we don't have good young people. It's all this rubbish and like things like this. Of course, that's not true. Yes, they always say 20 years ago, 30 years ago, it was better. It wasn't better. I can say I'm working in a flower school, in a vocational school since almost 30 years. And I can tell you it has not got worse. Yes, estimated flower shops in Germany, about 50, oh, that's missing the one, I just changed it this morning, but uh, 15,000 should that be, not 5,000. It's, it's not corrected. Yes, so this is the education in the special profession, but it's not the end for some of the florists. They want to go on further, so we have continuing education. We have the possibility, the opportunity to go on master school. Master school is also surveyed by the Chamber of Industry and Commerce. Yes. If you pass this master school with this exam, you are a German Floristmeister. Um, you can imagine that this exam is much more higher level than the exam of a florist. Of course, it has to be. They're much more contents. The exam is re really very big. You have to write reports, many, many pages. You have to make visual things. You have to make presentations. And you have to make also some practical things. But it's not that much normally. You can also visit a technical school in Germany. Indeed, we have only one technical school. It's uh, a school in Weihenstephan. It's a, close to Munich. It's a very famous school. Uh, you go there for two years, and afterwards, your title is Bachelor Professional in Floristry. <clears throat> and the German Floristmeister and the Bachelor Professional Floristry has the U European Qualification Frame Level 6. Yes? It's like a bachelor from university. It's also level six. Yes, what else can you do? You can do university studies when you are a florist. Of course, you have to be, have solved the high school. Otherwise, it's not possible. These two things you can do with your just normal exam with a florist. This only with this exam in high school. 
And then you can go for teacher in vocational school, teaching there, florists. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> As I told you, in Germany, it's really surveyed by official institution like the state. So we have many laws and acts that are uh, that take care that everything goes in the right way. So in Germany we call it not only florist, so we call it a state certified florist. This is the official title because the state gives the frame of all this and surveys this education. And also we have this state certified florist meister. And in the absolute requirement for both titles is that you make a theoretical exam in German language. There's no chance to make it in a foreign language. You will not get a translation. You're not even allowed to use a digital translator, just a book. You're allowed to use a dictionary book, but that's all. And you have to write your, your exam, your theoretical test in German language. I say this really very, very clearly because we have some claims with foreign countries where some of some, some florists came to Germany and made some kind of test and then they say they are Floristmeister. It's only possible with this German language theoretical test. Otherwise, you're not a German Floristmeister. Maybe, maybe there in foreign countries we have other titles for that, but not German Floristmeister. And of course, you have to make this practical exam. Yeah, no legal title without that. No German legal title. So, but we have alternative titles for foreigners. The German Association, Florist Association, has partners, especially here in Korea. And there are possibilities and opportunities to get some other titles without this test in German language. There, on one side, we have, for the beginners, we have Floral Arrangeur. Yes? So it starts with training and education in the domestic country, for example, here in Korea. There's uh, Korean teachers that teach the students there. And the exam is also in the domestic, can be in the domestic country. If you solve that, you are exam, uh, you are a floral arrangeur. <clears throat> of course, the Florist Association, FDF, they survey that. They survey with their partners. They're looking what kind of tests are they making and is it correct, yes or no? And then they get this floral arrangeur title together, of course, with this logo from FDF. By the way, we have two. Uh, this is uh, from all over Germany and this is the Bavarians, but it's the same. It's just, this is just a new one, but it's both FDF. So, and after you have your title as a floral arrangeur, you can try to get a floral stylist. And the way to that is, at first, training education in your domestic country. And afterwards, you have a training in Germany. Yeah. It's mandatory and the exam must be in Germany together with a chamber of craft and industry, and a chamber of um, commerce and industry. And then you get a, an exam, you get a uh, certificate with FDF and IHK, that means chamber of commerce and industry. But this must be done in Germany. The written exam can be made in foreign language. So it will be translated so this can also be uh, in, in foreign language, yes. So these are opportunities that 
uh, are given that we, we that we from our German association that we force to do that we that we uh, trying to widespread all over the world. There's another thing that we are just because I'm also in Florint involved as you have seen. Uh, we're trying to create a kind of Florint florist. It's we started this, we are not finished in the end, but we are helping other countries that do not have this stately surveyed uh, education. We are going to give support to build up a kind of stately education in floristry. Yeah. So, thank you for your attention and I tried to write a little bit in Korean. I hope this is right. Any questions? Thank you very much. 여러분 박수 한번 보내주시죠. 네, 고맙습니다. 자, 이제 질문을 좀 받아보도록 하겠습니다. 혹시 궁금한 점이 있으시거나 의견 있으시면 손을 들어주시고요. 저희가 마이크 전달을 드리겠습니다. 자, 이번 포럼의 마지막 연사님이시고요. 이번 시간을 위해서 정말 귀한 시간에 어서 와주셨거든요. 여러분 소통할 수 있는 기회이니까요. 혹시 궁금한 점 있으시면 손 들어주시고요. 네, 마이크 전달을 좀 부탁을 드릴까요? 네, 간략하게 부탁을 드립니다. 네, CNB 뉴스의 김진부 기자입니다. 간단한 질문 하나만 좀 드리겠습니다. 어, 지금 전체적인 그 진행이라든지 이런 것을 상공회의소에서 주관을 하고 있는 것 같은데 그런 점이 참 신선, 신선했습니다. 그러면 상공회의소에서 그런 시험이나 이런 것들을 할때그 비용이나 이런 것은 국가에서 제공해 주는지 아니면 자체적으로 어떤 비용을 마련하는지 상공회의소의 역할에 대해서 조금 더 설명해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. school doesn't there's there are no costs for the trainees it's paid by the state it's free it's free but they are forced to go there they have to go to school it's a part of the education yes and the owner of the flower shop he has to send the trainee to school he has to say tomorrow you have to go to school you you cannot stay in the flower shop you cannot go anywhere, you have to go to school. It's very strict. Yes, thank you very much. 자, 혹시 또 질문이 있으시다면 알려주시고요. 손을 들어주시면 마이크 전달을 드리겠습니다. 네, 앞쪽에 계시네요. 네, 잠시 일어나셔서 부탁을 드립니다. 고맙습니다. 네. 아, 네. 그 외국인도 독일에 가서 이제 독일 정부가 지원하는 학교에서 입학을 할 경우에 그런 교육의 의무를 다 한다면 그 재정 지원은 다 정부에서 관할해서 감당해 주시는 건가요? 에 대해서 묻고 싶습니다. 외국인에 대해서도 지원이 가능한지. Yes, about the costs of these foreigners that uh, for this floral arrangement and floral stylist. I, I don't know exactly the costs about this, but of course it is of it's your own expense doing this. This because there's no program in Germany. It's you you have a private school and private the education in FDF is a private one, so it's an own expense. And mm, I don't know the amount how what it costs. I I should must have a look and maybe. He can inform. There are different schools in Korea already, where he can apply, and they will tell them the costs. Thank you. 
자, 혹시 추가 질문이 있으시다면 손을 들어주시고요. 자, 이제 마지막 발표 수고해 주셨는데요. 아, 추가 질문이 더 없으시다면 저희가 마지막 발표를 마무리 해보도록 하겠습니다. So now it's time to wrap up the presentation and session. Thank you very much for your presentation. 여러분 큰 박수 다시 한번 보내주시기 바랍니다. 고맙습니다.